So here we have it, the brand new release by the company Givenchy. This one just came out this year in 2021. Of course, this is a flanker. This fragrance is called Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Toilette Intense. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance, let you know what I think of it, how it stacks up against some of the other fragrances by Givenchy. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my fragrance review of Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Toilette Intense, and I tell you if I find it to be intense, how it stacks up against some of the other fragrances by Givenchy, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you like fragrance reviews just like this, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. It would mean so much to me. And also while you're at it, please leave a like down below for the YouTube algorithm. That would mean a lot to me as well. So here we have a fragrance that just came out this year in 2021. Uh, the perfumers behind this fragrance, actually two perfumers, Natalie Lorson and Olivier Cresp. Olivier Cresp is one of my favorite perfumers. He's done Sedley by Parfum de Marly, uh, Light Blue for Her by uh, Dolce & Gabbana. He's also done uh, Thierry Mugler's Angel, right, which came out in the early 90s. So he has quite the extensive resume. And here we have a fragrance that is quite similar to some of its predecessors. Of course, this is the Eau de Toilette Intense version. So it has a lot of the same in ingredients and the same notes. So you are going to find iris, you are going to find cardamom, but this one also has cypress in here. It also has basil in here. So it's a little spicy. It's a little floral, it's a little aromatic, it's a little woodsy as well. So I'm definitely excited to give you my thoughts on the smell. Let's start things off with a quick look at the presentation. So in the opening of this fragrance, you're going to get just a little bit of citrus, a little bit of bergamot, nothing too profound or anything like that. At the end of the day, this is not a citrus fragrance, but as you give this fragrance a chance to dry down, the spiciness of the cardamom really starts to come through. And of course, when we're talking about designer fragrances, there are so many that are using cardamom now. Of course, La Nuit de L'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent probably comes to mind. This one also reminds me of the most recent Dolce & Gabbana, the one flanker. I think it's called like Eau de Parfum Intense. So there's just something about it with that mild sweetness in the base and that spicy nuance in the opening. And I think it's because of the cardamom that I'm actually reminded of that fragrance. Now, what I remember is with some of the previous iterations from Givenchy, there were some that were a little bit more on the sweeter side. There were some like the one in the white bottle that was a little bit more on the fresher side, if I'm remembering correctly. This one seems to be a little bit more on the herbal and aromatic side of things. So there's that culinary quality in here on account of the basil. And what I've learned recently is a lot of fragrances that contain basil have this quirky freshness about them that's really hard to explain. And I think I'm seeing a shift from a lot of fragrances that were centered around like clary sage, which also creates a bit of freshness and that masculine quality, after all, the name of the fragrance is Gentleman. Uh, now we're seeing that there's this shift to basil. And I think that that's really interesting, right? And I like to smell that basil, tarragon, using these unconventional green, herbal, and aromatic ingredients to sort of create that olfactory disparity. I think that that's pretty cool. So you get the basil in here and it doesn't remind you of pasta or anything. It's not that strong of a basil note. I really think that it's like 80% cardamom, 20% basil. And then as the fragrance dries down, the iris starts to come through. And you can take it or leave it because some people like an iris that is very starchy. Uh, they like an iris that is very lipsticky or it smells like a cosmetic bag. And of course, I'm thinking about Dior Homme by Christian Dior, perhaps even Dior Homme Intense or some of the other flankers. And of course, there's also Valentino Uomo. And I know there are some other flankers of that, like the Noir Absolute version, which kind of reminds me of Tom Ford's Black Orchid, but I digress. So it really all depends on how you like your iris at the end of the day. So if you like it sweet, of course, I would recommend Dior Homme Intense. If you like it really starchy, 
Gucci, I would recommend the original Dior Homme. If you want something that's a little bit more well-rounded and you have, a, you want a little bit of that nutty vibe uh, with that hazelnut sort of accord, Valentino Uomo is the way to go. Also a little sweet there. This is the spicy and aromatic take on Iris. And I think it's the most gentlemanly expression of Iris. So it's taking an ingredient that some might view as feminine, but it really is masculinizing it, you know? When you think about fragrances like Dior Homme, that fragrance can come across smelling a little metrosexual, right? And people have often ascribed that adjective to Dior Homme. This one doesn't give me those vibes. And I think that's because of the woods, because of the earthiness of the cypress, because of the spiciness of the cardamom, and because of the quirkiness and the freshness of the basil that's in here. I like this one. I really do like this one. I think it's very easy to wear, very easy to pull off. At times, it almost gives me this slightly sweet and slightly fruity tobacco vibe. And I think it's because of the comparison that I've made in my mind to Dolce & Gabbana, the one, but this definitely comes across smelling very gentlemanly, very classy, very smooth. If you are a fan of the one, or more specifically, the one Eau de Parfum Intense by Dolce & Gabbana, and you wanna smell that with a little bit of iris, I think this one is a really interesting fragrance to check out. I purchased mine either at Nordstrom or Macy's. In any case, I'm gonna leave a link down below, not an affiliate link at all. Uh, so I hope you get a chance to, at the very least, check this out in a store if you have a Macy's or a Nordstrom nearby. I hope it's to your liking. At the end of the day, fragrance is subjective. So if you do get a chance to try it out, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And also let me know what is your favorite flanker from the Gentleman series by Givenchy. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I like the overall smell. I think it's very fascinating to me that you can take a note like Iris and you can masculinize it in such a way. But in terms of the uniqueness, it does kind of remind me of Dolce & Gabbana, the one and some of its flankers. And so I don't think it's the most unique fragrance and it also is a flanker of another gentleman fragrance, right? So at the end of the day, it might be lacking a little bit in the uniqueness department, but the overall smell is very appealing. In terms of the longevity, you can expect about seven hours on your skin. The projection for this one is going to be about an hour and a half of consistent projection. It never really radiated beyond an arm's length because like I said, there isn't a whole lot of citrus in here. But in terms of the versatility, I think I can see this one being worn in every season except for the summertime. Unless of course you're wearing it on a cool summer evening, then you can totally pull it off. And if you're wearing it indoors, then these recommendations don't even apply. I do find that this one leans a little bit masculine, but I can see a confident woman pulling this one off as well. Anybody of any age can wear this one. And I think that this one does give off a bit of a formal vibe. And if you want a more citrusy iteration, there are some within the same series that you can wear on a more casual level. Uh, but I definitely think this one leans a little bit more formal than its predecessors. And in terms of the presentation, I like it. Sometimes the names Eau de Toilette Intense, Eau de Parfum Intense, Eau de Parfum Intense Noir, and they keep adding these other uh, suffixes to it. It can get a little bit confusing, but in any case, the presentation is pretty cool with the blue bottle and the coloration on the front with the fade. My final verdict on this fragrance is if you are a fan of iris fragrances and you want to smell a masculine iteration containing cypress and woods and cardamom and basil, definitely check this one out, especially if you are a fan of Dolce & Gabbana's The One Eau de Parfum Intense. You like that sort of dried fruit tobacco thing going on in there. Imagine an irisy version of that. That's what you're going to get with this fragrance. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, mostly gentlemen, I think aka gentlemen. Uh, if you are a fan of this type of content, if you're new to this channel, you took something of value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. That was my review of Givenchy's Gentleman Eau de Toilette Intense. Also leave a like down below. It would mean a lot to me as well. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you very soon. Bye.